Contender Regime Boxing, checking back in with y'all, man. What's good? So I want to talk about David Benavidez's performance this past weekend versus Caleb Plant. Um, we all know David Benavidez got the unanimous decision victory over Caleb Plant. Um, had his first pay-per-view outing as a main event. Um, it was a really good fight, a very competitive fight through and through. Uh, the fight went exactly how I expected it to go outside of David Benavidez getting a stoppage like I predicted at night in the ninth round. I talked about in the po in immediate post-fight reaction some of the reasons why he didn't get the stoppage. Number one, um, he didn't invest in the body um, as he should have. Um, and that's something that I said. I, t I talked about that in the prediction video and what he needed to do. One of the glaring weaknesses that I saw from David Benavidez up until this point, and he showed once again why um, he has so much more improvement to make. So that was the main reason why he didn't get the stoppage. He didn't invest in the body. And then also Kenny Bayless, who is just, he's, I'm not a, a fan of Kenny Bayless at all as a referee. He's terrible, honestly. Just being complete honest with you, he's a terrible referee if you have a fighter that likes to work on the inside, and that's when you got somebody that's clinching and trying to stop the other guy from working. And I can understand when there is excessive holding. Number one, you give that guy a, a warning for excessively holding, not even like clinching, using it effectively, clinching, and then, you know, setting shit up off, off the break, you know what I'm saying, or like, just trying to tire a guy out, slowing him down. Like, it's effective ways to use a clinch to set up offense and then to also stop the other guy from working. But when you're just for consecutive rounds, six rounds, just holding and just holding with nothing coming back from it, no type, you're not setting nothing up. All you're doing is just stopping the action. And you should get a point taken away from that. Also, you know, um, Kenny Bayless, when guys have a hand free, you're supposed to let the fighters work. You're not supposed to just break up the action when there, somebody's trying to fight on the inside and there's hands free. You you let those guys work. You let them work out the clinch. You don't just break up the action and shit and then allow the other guy to get rest. And now this guy got to close the dishes again and get back into that position and regain leverage. So Kenny Bayless, in my opinion, did a terrible job when it comes to uh, refereeing that fight. You dig what I'm saying? So uh, that was a huge issue that I had. One That was just another reason why David Benavidez didn't get the stoppage. I'm not making no excuses for him. I'm just telling y'all what I saw in that fight. Um, so I want to break down, you know, uh, what I saw from David Benavidez and what I think, you know, he would look like going forward, what, what should be next, what I'm expecting from him. First and foremost, um, again, he got the victory. I, I thought he had a decent performance as far as stepping up in competition. This is the best fighter that he's been in the ring with. Um, his first pay-per-view under the lights. When all things considered, I thought David Benavidez gave a, a decent account of himself. Um, you could tell in the first couple of rounds, especially the first round, he was doing a lot of lunging. Uh, had a lot of like, I would say, iffy and funny movement. You know, really under like really uh, misjudging the distance, and you know it took him a couple of rounds to kind of get acclimated to this level, get acclimated to the pace, try to get Caleb Plant's timing down, and start to get closer to him and cut the ring off, which he did around round five, you know, round four, round five, round six is when he started to get closer and closer. And then I had David Benavidez really watching Caleb Plant from round six all the way up. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, he, he his jab was okay. It wasn't as good as it could have been. His jab was okay. If his jab was better, I think the stoppage would have came. Um, but he did pop the jab out, you know, to use it as a range finder. Um, he used it to set up some of his big shots. Um, his left hook was looking good. Um, he had a nice chopping overhand right every time, every time uh, Caleb Plant tried to duck out of danger. You know, he would throw that chopping right hand sometimes it would land sometimes it wouldn't sometimes he would graze the gloves and you know hit shoulders and which also still has an impact on your opponent so uh, David Benavidez did some things that I thought were good as far as I think 
the most I wasn't I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't impressed with David Benavidez in this fight. Um, he did what I thought he was supposed to do. I mean, I thought he was supposed to stop Caleb Plant, to be honest with you. But he got the victory. Stylistically, I just felt like with Caleb Plant's lack of a gas tank, with him inevitably slowing down later on in the fight, which he did, I thought Benavidez should have been able to, to press the gas on him. And even with the excessive holding, break those clinches and get your shit out. But again, goes back to Kenny Bayless. When you break the clinches and you get a hand free, if the ref don't let you work, it's hard to really like punish a guy on the inside, like how Earl Spence do. When Earl Spence get close, like the reason why he's so dangerous on the inside is that when guys try to hold him and stop his work, he always gets a hand free and he's welling. He's welling. He's welling. He's banging up your body on that inside to stop your ass from holding. And then from that, that point, when you realize you can't hold him no more, he just stalk you down and just put 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 that pressure and put them an accumulation of ass whooping on you. That's about, that exactly what he do. Now, David Benavidez, you know, like I said, he, he wasn't able to do that. A lot of that is because he didn't invest in the body and he didn't use the jab enough like I thought he should have did. So I wasn't impressed with his boxing skills and ability in the fight. What I was impressed with was his mental fortitude. He kept coming forward. He didn't get overly frustrated with Kenny Bayless fucking up his work on the inside with Caleb Plant excessively holding. He didn't let that take him off his game. A lot of times when you see guys... Uh, especially when they step up on a big stage under the lights, when they have things that don't go their way, something that's negating them from being able to do the shit that they do on a regular basis, like coming forward, throwing punches in bunches, guys get frustrated and that shit shows in a ring. They get, they have mental lapses. Um, you know, they, they kind of get, lose confidence, you know what I'm saying? And they stop working. They just, kind of accept defeat like bro i can't do nothing about this dude holding me or i can't do nothing about kenny bayless stopping me from working on the inside david benavidez didn't do that he kept coming forward and kept throwing that's one thing i was impressed with with david benavidez his his mental fortitude and his attrition he never stopped coming in in the 12th round when caleb plant you know did try to sit down on his punches and let motherfuckers know look i ain't going down without no fight david benavidez obliged him and he he let his shit go and, and he fought. So I was in, I was very impressed with David Benavidez's heart, which is something that I never questioned anyway. Um, you never really know what a fighter would look like when it comes to the mental game, when they get on this, when they get to the highest level and when they under the lights and things ain't going their way. You never really know what to expect. I, I didn't look at David Benavidez as somebody who will crack under pressure mentally. And he proved that I was right in that assumption that you know, he do have that type of mental fortitude. So I was very impressed with that. But I got to say, uh, David Benavidez did not show me that he was an elite fighter in this fight versus Caleb Plant. Kudos to him for winning. I picked him to win. But he got a lot of work to do, bro. You got to go to the body. If you're going to be a pressure fighter, you can't just be no headhunter. You can't just be trying to throw big shots at the head, trying to get a, a highlight reel knockout. You have to break your opponent down, an accumulation of ass whooping. Use the jab, set everything up behind the jab, go to the body, and you have to cut the ring off. But you, you're not going to be able to effectively cut the ring off if you're not using your jab to the head and to the body while you're coming forward. You have to, when you close that distance, you got to use that stick to, to, to gain leverage and, and keep them in that position that you want him in. You know what I'm saying? When he move left, you know, you shuffle to the left, throw that stick at him. You feel me? Make stick him where you want him to be in that ring so you can pin him and get your shit off how you want to. You know what I'm saying? You can't just walk forward mindlessly thinking that's going to win you rounds. If Caleb Plant had a gas tank, he'd have won that fight. If Caleb Plant had a gas tank that was worth a damn, he'd have beat David Benavidez. But the fact that he didn't, David Benavidez ultimately got to him and was able to get whatever he could get off on him. But David Benavidez got to learn how to, ha to have a sustained, consistent body attack and a consistent jab if he want to take his game to the next level. He's not an elite fighter yet, but he can be one. He got the hand speed. He got the punching power. He got the size. He got the mental fortitude. He got the heart. I want to see David Benavidez use that jab consistently, and I want to see him invest in a body. When you get in there with Canelo Alvarez, David Benavidez is going to get his ass whooped fucking with Canelo Alvarez, and he ain't going to the body, bro. 
You coming forward just trying to throw straight headshots. Canelo going to weave them bitches and, and make you pay. Canelo, one of the best counter punchers in the sport. He going to weave and, and in close quarters, going to weave that bitch and hit you in that soft-ass body. You know David Benavidez is soft around the body. He looked good in this fight. Had a six-pack for the first time, but he's still built like a box of Newports, still soft around the body area. Canelo is the type of fighter that's going to make you miss and make you pay with power shots, not no little pity pat ass shots. He going to weave and hit your ass where, where you least expect it while you're out of position because you're missing a lunging shot to the head and he going to blow your body up, bro. And then going to follow that with a shot up top. You feel what I'm saying? David Benavidez has to learn how to work the body and use his jab coming forward. All that head hunting versus elite counter punchers versus guys that, that know how to make you uh, miss and make you pay. Not just make you miss like Kayla Plant, but motherfuckers that can make you pay with that shit. You going to have to go to the body. That's what he need to do if he want to be a lead fighter, man. But I want to see David Benavidez get the Canelo Alvarez fight next. I think that's a great matchup. I would love to see him versus Demetrius Andre. I would love to see him versus uh, David Morrell. Uh, David Morrell, I, I saw that the president of the WBA is lobbying for that fight. So I think that's a great fight. Morrell is extremely talented, young, but extremely talented. And I think he would give David Benavidez a hell of a fight. You know what I'm saying? And if David Benavidez ain't fixed that lack of a jab and the body work, he fuck around and get his ass whooped by David Morrell. Big facts. Because that motherfucker, he going to the body. He throwing out his, his punch variation crazy. And his defense is better than David Benavidez, even at this point in his young career. So, all in all, good win by David Benavidez, but I wasn't impressed. Because he still showed me a lot of them weaknesses that he ain't fixed yet. You, he, you got too much power and too much hand speed, too much ability on offense not to be going to the body. He could have been broke down Kayla Plant. You got to go to the body. That's what Canelo was doing with less punch output versus Kayla Plant. That's how he stopped him. Because when he did get an opportunity to, to, to land punches, he was going to the body. You have to, when, when you're fighting a mover, you got to invest in a body to slow them legs down and get him where you want to hit him. That's what you got to do, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments. What did y'all think about David Benavidez's performance? What did you grade it? I would, I would, I probably have to give him like a, like a B plus, like a B. I'll give him like a B or a B plus grade. I really, I'll give him like a B, honestly. I wasn't impressed. I wasn't impressed. B or B plus. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments. Uh, what did y'all think about Benavidez's performance and what do you want to see next from him? Um, going forward. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Contender regime boxing. I'll holler at y'all boys, man.